Hey, how's it going? This is Jack Oberkirsch with HomeMusicMaker.com, and today's video is titled Reaper Beat Detective. Before we go any further, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ding the bell on this video to be notified of future videos. We got a bunch more tutorials coming your way and you don't want to miss out. First things first, there is one function in this tutorial that requires the SWS extension for Reaper. Uh, this is a free extension. It's totally legit, you know, it's from in the description of this video. I guess you could get through this step without downloading the SWS extension pack, but it's, it's going to be a lot more um, mouse clicking and dragging work. We'll get to that later. All right, so let's get started. The first step is we're going to um, solo our kick and snare drum tracks. I use two mics on each, but if you just have um, one mic for each, it's the same process. We also want to make sure that our transients for our kick drum and snare drum are in the same ballpark volume wise. Uh, if our snare was drastically quieter, we would have a hard time doing the dynamic split because it wouldn't pick up the transients the same way. So now that we have those tracks soloed, go ahead and select the drum bus that all of our drum tracks belong to, render slash freeze tracks, and go to render to mono, render tracks to mono stem tracks. So that's going to give us just a track. Um, I'll show you. This track is going to be just the um, kick and snare. Yeah, so that's just our kick and snare drum track that we rendered. I'm just going to change the length of this track to match my other ones real quick. But yeah, so now we're going to use this track that we just rendered to do the dynamic split for the rest of them, or for the rest of the drum tracks. So go ahead and highlight everything, right click it, go to group, group items, and now you'll notice if you have all your items grouped, typically you won't be able to select one individual. You'll be, you'll be selecting them all. However, uh, there's a mouse modifier we got to do real quick. So go to options, preferences, mouse modifiers, and go to media item, left click, and then it's this one right here. Select item ignoring grouping because that'll make it so that I can select one item and it'll ignore the rest of the grouping. I have that mouse modifier set up already, but if not, you go to media item, left click, select item ignoring grouping. Cool. So now that we have that done, that this item is the only one selected, go ahead and right click this item again, go to item processing and go to dynamic split items. And this is the, uh, this is the important part. So basically what we're doing, you can see these lines right here at all, at most of our transients. If I hit split right now, that's where the track would be split. However, I want to change a couple things. So let's go through. I'm going to find a good transient for an example. This one's a pretty good example. You see, this one's not getting picked up. It should. So I'm going to change the threshold a little bit. Um, and remember when you're using this feature, sometimes you're not going to nab every transient. So, you know, this is actually, I'd be on the right track if I split this right here, but I want to get it super accurate. So I'm going to try a little harder. So go to set transient activity down here. We're going to try to, well, let's leave the threshold right around there. Let's actually go to this reduce splits function. It'll um, program the number of splits. I'm going to change, I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. Yeah. So as you can see now, grab that split. Let's see if there's any others that it's missing. So for the most part, as you can see, we have like just the right amount of splits right now. What you don't want is, I'll show you an example, if we take the threshold and put it all the way to like negative 60, now we got splits of like blank audio, just like totally unnecessary. So I find that the sweet spot is usually, you know, closer to here. So yeah, let's just double check that. But as you can see, it's looking pretty good as far as it's nabbed almost every transient. Um, and then for action to perform, you want it to be set to split, selected, and grouped items. That's going to make it so that all of our drum tracks are split based on just this one, because I don't need dynamic splits for my crash cymbals and my tom hits. I'm mostly trying to quantize this track based on the kick and snare drum hits. So, so now we're going to hit split. And look at that. We got all our splits done. So just like that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is we don't really need this drum bus anymore. This was the one that we, or not the, we do need the drum bus. I mean, we don't need this rendered track that we rendered all of our kick and snare drums to now that the splits are done. So we're going to remove this track, close that window. So now we can start quantizing. And when you're quantizing drums, I especially uh, Reaper's MIDI quantize function is pretty good, but the audio quantize function isn't always the best. So I try to just do one or two bars at a time. Go to item processing, quantize item positions to grid. You can set the, um, the note length here. I have it set to 16th notes. Let's see how that does. Oh, and real quick. Also, you want to go to options and turn off auto crossfade media items when editing. 
as well as trim content behind media items when editing. I forgot about that. So we're going to do that. And then we need to undo what I just did as far as the quantize. Could it, it did some auto uh, crossfades and I don't necessarily want those. So now that we have this function turned off, let's try that again. Right click, item processing, quantize item positions to grid. So yeah, that's where you can find quantize. You can also set up a hotkey for it. I just don't have one set up right now and I wanted to show you guys where it was on the menu. So that's the first bar or the first two bars rather. Let's get the next two. Highlight them, item processing, quantize, boom, scrolling along. And um, also, if you wanted to keep a more natural feel to your drums, you could you could go ahead and not um, like automatically crossfade them. You could just go go through and move individual hits. Like let's say I just didn't like where this kick hit was, I could just move that. And as you can see, since my items are grouped, everything moves together, which is you know super important. Cool. And then let's grab these last couple bars and call it a day. Quantize item positions to grid. Again, I'm basing it off 16th notes. I'm going to show you what it does if you change it to like quarter notes or something. It gives you a bunch of empty space. So I typically like to do eight quarter notes, but this always depends on the type of uh, track you're working on, the tempo of the song, the way the drummer was playing. Depends on many things. But as far as this one goes, six, oh, 16th notes have been doing me pretty good. Cool. So now let's go ahead and take a listen to this track, Quantized. Nice. I'm seeing a couple hits that are a little bit off. Um, if I had if I had a bit more time and if I wasn't doing a tutorial video, I could I would go through and do a bit more correction. But for all intents and purposes, this track is looking pretty quantized. It's pretty tight. It still has a good human feel to it also. So the next thing we need to do is fill this empty space. As you can see, there's a bunch of empty spaces of silence in the audio. So what we're going to do is go to Actions, Show Action List. And this is where you need that SWS, like the SWS extension, like I was saying. So from the action list, after you have SWS downloaded and installed, type in fill and you should see fill gaps between selected items. Let's click that. I typically turn stretch if needed off. I typically don't like to do any stretching at this point. Uh, I do, and I these settings are pretty good. Five milliseconds, five milliseconds, 15 milliseconds. You can adjust them, especially if you hit okay and there's something wonky, you can hit undo and try some other things, but this typically does pretty good for me. So let's hit okay. Oh, I gotta select the tracks, my bad. So yeah, first you have to select the tracks, then hit okay. So now you can see it filled out all of our spaces. Let's take a gander. Cool. Now we got our tracks quantized. We got our tracks crossfaded, so there's no even space. And then yeah, from here, if you wanted to, now that the bulk of the job is done, uh, you could go through and move individual transients to line them up a bit more, but I think this track is sounding pretty good for me. Um, I like to keep somewhat of a human feel with my drums anyway. So yeah, that pretty much concludes, uh, you know, now you got your drums quantized, edited. It's time to move into the mixing phase. So yeah, let's do a quick recap of the video for the day. First of all, remember you got to download that SWS extension. I'll put a link in the uh, description of this video, and it's only for that one that one action that we did to fill the spaces. So if you don't have SWS extension or you couldn't figure out how to get it installed, Hypothetically, you could turn crossfading back on and go through and do each hit or go through and do each crossfade uh, manually. That would just take a lot more time. So yeah, that was, the, that was the first thing we mentioned. The next thing is to get started on the process, solo all your kick and snare drum tracks, whether it be two, three, or four, however many mics you used. Right click the drum bus, go to render slash, render slash freeze tracks, render tracks to mono tracks. And that's after soloing only your kick and snare drums. That will give you a stem copy of the kick and snare transients. Move that under your drum bus. From there, you got to group your tracks by going by selecting your tracks, right click, group, and then you hit group items. Um, once your tracks are grouped, you go ahead and do the dynamic split on the um, on the stem track of the kick and snare tracks. After that, that will split all your tracks. From there, you can delete the kick and snare track and then do your quantizing and call it a day. Well, quantizing and then fill the gaps or do some manual crossfades, but either way, that's pretty much the process. We're getting um, pretty much the same results of the Pro Tools Beat Detective feature out of Reaper. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, remember to like, comment, subscribe, ding the bell. We got some more useful tutorials coming up. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. You guys have a great day.